Good evening and welcome to our Easter conference for today. Uh, today is Tuesday, yes. Tuesday, April, I think April 15th. Yeah. Oh, welcome. Yeah. Wel welcome. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray, dear Jesus, we pray for a supernatural anointing tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you coming in, coming in. We ask God for supernatural opportunity tonight. Dear Jesus, we ask for open doors. We ask for an opening in the heaven. Father, send down to us packages, send down to us new things, pour into our system new movies, new books, new messages, new songs. Connect us with what people are doing in our kingdom heaven itself. Tonight, dear Holy Spirit, we appeal to you because without you, we can do nothing. Without you, Jesus, we are helpless and hopeless on earth. Without you, Holy Spirit, we cannot really, really achieve. We cannot achieve much on the earth. So we look, we look up to you. We look up to your power. We look up to your presence. That's all that we have on the earth. We do not come to your house to beg, but we come to remind you and to appeal to you as your children about what our needs are. We are emotionally needy of thee, Oh, Jesus, we want to always be with you. We enjoy being with you a lot. We enjoy being with you. I want to, wherever you are in the world, to begin to pray and tell Jesus, tell him that you enjoy being with him. Tell the Holy Spirit you enjoy being with him. Tell God the Father that you enjoy being with him. Tell the angels you enjoy being with them. Come on, let's begin to tell them that. And remind, remind the Almighty that you are a child of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, I'm a child of the Holy Ghost. child of the Holy Ghost. I am a child of the Holy Spirit. I am a covenant child of God. I am a heir of the kingdom with Christ Jesus. I thank you, I praise you, I worship you. I thank you, I praise you, I worship you. Yes, welcome God, Lord. We release ourselves to you. who we are to you. Lord, we pray for miracles, miracles to build our faith. Yeah, begin to ask God for miracles so that your faith is built. Don't mind those people that tell you that miracle is not necessary to build your faith. Begin to ask God for miracle. Tell him if you give me miracle, it will make my faith in you to be strong. Talk to him about it. Come on, go for it. Go for it.
into the presence of God. The presence of God is like when you are in the presence of someone that has achieved greatness and money and fame. When you come in contact with those people, do not just admire them for the achievement. Go to them and ask for help. Tell them that you want to be like them. That's how to do it. That's how we do it in life. You don't just see great people and just walk away from them. Make good use of the opportunity when you meet a great person. That's how life works. So when you see the things of God working, for example, like a meeting like this, this is a place where you come to jump in to receive from God. If you come not wanting anything, you don't receive anything. to you tonight. Lord, I bring the offerings of Gal, I bring the offerings of Cheferol, I bring the offerings of Amanda and Kishan, I bring the offerings of, um, of Mayam of New York, I lift them up before you and I command that the powers of the enemy be broken with these offerings. I command the money to flow into their lives so that, Lord, mighty seed will be placed in their hands for them to sow, to invest in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay. Uh, who is that? Who is that? You know who you are. Can you turn your phone? Everybody mute your phones. Mute your phone, mute your phone, especially if you are if there is noise around where you are. Mute your phones. But if there is no noise around where you are, leave your phone the way it is because 
we are doing some interaction here. There is somebody who's, who your phone is having a problem. Can you mute it? The person who just did mute the phone and stop that noise, keep that phone muted permanently for the meantime. Okay. All right, let's continue. Okay, if the phone continues to give trouble, then I'm going to mute everybody. Please, if you are at your place of your job or if you are at home and you are moving around and doing things, could you press mute? Because we have very important things to share tonight. And the rest of you, if you know that your phone is not having problem, please do not mute your phone. If it's giving, if your phone has problems, if you are using internet phone, mute it. If you have internet phone, mute it. Let us continue to pray. Okay, there is somebody who doesn't even know that their phone is having a problem. All callers are muted and they can unmute themselves. All right, I have muted everybody. So I will be the only one praying tonight. Dear Father, dear Holy Spirit, I ask you to move powerfully in the life of your people the way you want it, however you want it. Of a truth, you are God, and there is no one like you. Move powerfully tonight. Share your blessings with your people tonight. Dear Holy Spirit, however you want to minister to your people, we are your children. We are child. We are children of the Holy Spirit. We ask you tonight to move so powerfully as we have never seen you move. Do with us as it seemed good to you. Do good things as it seemed good to you. Let every sin of us be forgiven. Because we hold on to the righteous one, Christ Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to walk into this meeting the way you want it tonight. Clean up the mess in the life of your people. And lead us in the way everlasting. Reveal things that have been hidden from us. The strong strongholds. Heal the brokenhearted and preach the gospel to the meek. Let the acceptable year of the Lord be this year. Break bondages. Release the blessing to your people, O oh God. We ask all this in the name of Christ Jesus. We believe that you are willing to do what we have asked you. Show us what path that we have to play. What is our path that we have to play in the overall miracle that we have been asking you? Help us to know what role we have to play. So that we do not just think that because we have said you are the one that is going to give us a miracle, that we should not play a role, a path in bringing it about. Release your spirit to back us up. Make us to be aware of what we should know. 
of what role we should play. Release into our lives the people that you have put in place logistically to play a very important role in our miracles. Bring into this world the angels that you have placed in our life and path to bring about what we need on earth. We thank you for healing our bodies. You know where we are hurt. So we ask you to bless us, your people. In Jesus' name tonight, amen. In Exodus chapter 30, Exodus chapter 30, verse number 4, we read, And two golden, uh, let me see where we should start. Let me see where we should start. Can we talk about the crown? talk about the crown and let's see what is said in verse 4 and you shall make two golden rings shall thou make to eat talking about the altar of incense remember if you want to to know the introduction to this thing go back to yesterday's yesterday's night uh, ministry Yesterday's the Monday Easter conference. Go and look at the um, the video. Then you will know um, the introduction to this. So I hope that we can complete it tonight and let the Holy Spirit use this. Let Jesus use this the way He wants to use it to bless us and to strengthen us and to bring about miracles, clean up the mess in our lives and bring about mighty miracles. And here. He's talking about the altar of incense. One thing we discover about this altar of incense is that uh, they are to make two golden rings shall thou make to eat under the, the crown of it. Um, uh, by the two corners thereof okay upon the two sides of it shall thou let me see shall thou make it okay all this grammar and all this King James Version language here is this on each side you see, it is it is a four-sided square, like, or uh, um, depending on how you look at it, it was uh, an altar, simply well-made altar, covered with gold. Now, on on the four corners of this altar are to be a ring-like opening, a hole. There is like a hole on, on each one, one, two, three, four, where you can put a stick through the hole to the other side so that four people can carry it. That's the meaning of all this grammar. Make a hole, four holes, one, two, three, four, on the corners of it. And then make a staff we are going to see where it says that you should make a staff too and these are to be uh, uh, around where you have the crown you are to make this uh, golden uh, uh, and two golden uh, rings that is two golden openings 
two golden opening the rings actually there is like an opening something is this like um how do i put it it's like a place where you can put a stick through where you can put a stick through for carrying it so the altar was a movable the altar of incense was a movable altar so if the tabernacle or the temple moves if you move it to somewhere you have to move the altar of incense to now let me share something very deep here with you when jesus met that woman the woman of the samaritan woman and asked her to give him a drink the woman said why are you a jew asking me a samaritan for water to drink and jesus said something very powerful in the conversation between him and that woman he said this the time is coming when it will not be in Jerusalem or on any of this mountain that people will go to worship God what did Jesus say about worship he said those that desires to worship God must do what must worship him in what in spirit and in truth. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what Jesus said to the woman. He by that revolutionized prayer and worship. We are used to finding a particular place, a particular building. I want, I want those of you that your phone, if you're sure your phone is not giving trouble, please unmute it because I want to interact with you. The reason why I do what I do is to interact with you so that I can enjoy you. Because sometimes I want to ask questions. Sometimes I want to ask you to educate us. Sometimes I need you guys to pray with me. So it's not just me being a one, I don't like one man show kind of ministry. I hate it. It's not good for me. That's why some of you should try and save money and buy better phone, better phone. And not just be not just be struggling with poor quality phone that disturb everybody. Please, please. Use your money to get better things so that you don't keep disturbing everybody else with poverty. I don't want your poverty to 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 to, to influence the rest of us. We don't we are not enjoying it. <laughs> at least use that money to do something great for yourself yeah poverty is like a disease it can begin to infect other people don't 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 let that bug get hold of other people please we don't want to go back to cheap to cheap life it's not good my people say that in front of them person my family which means when something is too cheap, there is problem behind it. It's like my friend that went and bought a car and a BMW, so cheap. I look at that car, I said, that car is not going to last more than two weeks. He was so happy that he has bought a BMW. The following day, he took it to work. And as he was coming back from work, the car exploded near a gas station. <laughs> He was driving, I think he was driving to a gas station or something. The car exploded, the engine busted, and fire began. And the Indian or Pakistani guy that owned the gas station came out with stick to come and break his head that he's gonna set the gas station on fire. <laughs> and he got nothing out of the car. I'm telling you, cheap things is not good. Girl Vincent told me that she will kill me if she ever hear that I go to certain stores to buy stuff. I stopped going to those stores. And then came Geneva and told me you will never even dare enter certain places. I'm telling you. And I look at it, I say, this makes sense. <laughs> it's 
Does this make sense? That when they, there is no use to glorify poverty, I'm telling you. Do not glorify poverty. It's not a good thing. There's no way where God glorified it. No way where God glorified sickness. No way where God glorified joblessness. Or use it to gain political votes. So let's continue what we are saying. The altar of incense, where they lighted incense, was a movable thing. There was a handle where four priests lifted it and moved it. Church is not a permanent building. The building is not the church. You are the church. The one in whom Jesus lives inside is the church. Prayer is a movable thing. This particular thing under, under locks. You can look at this scripture and discover that it's coded. God was using symbols to talk to them about the future. That you can pray anywhere. You are a golden thing in the hand of God, not just dust and ashes. People lie to you that you are only dust and ashes, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. And I never hear them say spirit to spirit. Some of the languages of the church is so dumb, it's so dumb like a dumb dumb. Please unmute your phones if your phone is good so that you can enjoy this with me tonight. You see them going to bury, bury uh, 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 to put somebody's body to, to rest. You hear, you hear us pastors talking dust to dust, ashes to ashes. You never hear them talking of spirit to spirit. See how limited the church world is? It's just like when you go to a wedding ceremony. You hear the priests and the pastors and the bishops and the apostles and the evangelists and the teachers. You hear them talking about for better, for worse, for poorer, for richer, for sickness. Where on earth have you ever seen God speaking those things to human beings? Where do they get those things? Instead, what do you hear from God? If God wants to bless a marriage or a business or whatever, you always, you always hear God talking about multiply, be blessed, be fruitful, have dominion, rule, subdue, replenish. You never hear God adding sickness or poverty. So trying to tell people, you know, if, if things are okay, you stay. If things are not okay, you can go. You know, you have to manage whether things are good or not. God is not calling you to management. He's calling you to enjoyment. He wants to sustain you to live a high level life. That's my belief. That's why when I'm wedding people these days, when I'm conducting a wedding ceremony, I read the blessing that God spoke in the Garden of Eden, or I read the blessing that God spoke to Noah, or I read the blessing that God spoke to David, or I read the blessing that God spoke to Solomon, or I read the blessing, especially the one in the Garden of Eden and the one to Abraham. And then I read about the new covenant in Christ. That's what I read. I don't talk about sickness. I don't talk about poverty. I don't talk about a, 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 a death. I don't have any time for those nonsense. I'm not marrying somebody for poor or for, 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 for death. When they read out those things to you, you go home and you start having those things. By the time you know it, you start dying. Start getting sick. And watch out and the marriage break apart. apart. That's why I don't read those things to people. People already know that there will be challenges in life. Why do you need to tell them more about it? <laughs> Just simply tell them there will be challenges in life. Be strong. Be strong. That's all. 
don't need to go and be repeating and telling people that sickness is going to come your way and so on. You better not send sickness my way. If not, you are my enemy. And I won't even allow sickness to come near me. Because what you concentrate your mind to think about is what will begin to happen to you. That's why I don't even read those nonsense to anybody. I tell people the good things. I'm not interested in the bad things. You can pray anywhere. You can move your altar anywhere. Set up your altar anywhere. As far as your prayer is going to be heavy and mighty, it could be in your bedroom. That's where your altar is. It could be in your living room. Your altar could be by the fireplace like my own here. But you are the altar itself. And Christ is. And your incense needs to be burning. It needs to be on. The smoke needs to go up. That's the main thing. I was passing through some beautiful churches once. And I heard the Holy Spirit told me, I don't live in that place. I said, what do you mean? You don't, you don't live in those places. The Holy Spirit said, God doesn't live in any building. I said, I don't blame you. <laughs> I said, I don't blame you. You don't. We think God lives in those buildings. He doesn't. That, those buildings are just where people meet. In the name of God or in the name of something. <laughs> God lives inside people. He doesn't live inside buildings. And that is why when human beings want to commit a crime, they lock, they, they, they lock the church up and do whatever they want to do. If God lives in the church, I can tell you, when people come there with their criminal mindset, when they come there with all the evil they, they've committed, people will be slain in the Holy Ghost instantly. People will be dying because the Holy Spirit will be killing people like he killed Ananias and Zephyrias. If God lives in the building, people will not even be going to church because they will be too afraid. That when you walk in there, all the evil you committed throughout the week will be, will be revealed. And that's the kind of church that I want God to establish through us. When you walk through that door, if you have sex with somebody's wife, it will be revealed right there. So that you learn your lesson. If you stole, you broke, you went and stole from a bank in New York and ran down to Kansas to come and live quietly, you come into a church to be revealed. And you'll be told where you hid the money anyway. Yeah. You went and killed somebody somewhere and ran away. You didn't like your wife too much. You guys been quarreling. You shoot her. Then you fled. And you're walking into a church. Are you serious? Or you're a child molester? You've been through prison and you come out and you're coming to come and molest the rest of the children in the church. You come in there. Instantly, one of the prophets, thank God, I would rather want a woman to do it, who rise up and began to speak in tongues and everybody's yelling, yay! And you walk down and hold the man and say, come down here, young man. How many people do you want to come and abuse here? Are you serious? You are a child molester, dude. You are a pimp. You are a drug dealer. You need to repent of your son. That's the kind of church that I'm interested in seeing. Amen. Woman, you go about breaking people's home, breaking people's marriages. That has been your job for a long time. It's like a full-time, 40 hours a week job. Then it's about time that you let go of this kind of lifestyle. And she want to argue with us, the Holy Spirit, put the person on the ground, boom! Like Zechariah was, uh, was uh, arguing with the angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel says, listen to me. Listen to me, old man. Are you serious? You are arguing with me? Do you know who you are talking to? My name is Gabriel. And I stand before the presence of God. Nobody argues with me. Because you do not believe what I told you, you are going to be dumb till the day the child is born and will be given a name. And he became dumb instantly. That's how this thing plays out in the supernatural. 
Prayer is a very powerful thing. And it's like an altar with a lighted incense. You can move your prayer anywhere. Your prayer should not just be one type of prayer. It should be different kinds. Prayer that you cry out to God. Prayer that you shout. Prayer that you meditate. Heavy prayers that you knock until whether heaven or hell like it. Everywhere is shaken because of your prayer. And everybody is on the run and fleeing for their lives. Because your prayer is accomplishing something big. There was a, a, a girl that I knew when I was in, in high school. Because in high school, I, I, my dad never allowed us to have girlfriends or boyfriends. You are not allowed in our home. Daddy ever hear that, he, he beat the crap out of your life. You whip that butt. So we never dare. I never had a girlfriend. But there was this, this uh, 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 a, a girl that looks like a, a, she came from the ocean. Beautiful. And she really, really liked me a lot. And she will hide and come to come and visit my mom in order for her to see my face and say hi. And I didn't even know what she was doing because we don't know anything about boyfriend and girlfriend. And my mom whispered in my ears and said, I understand why she comes to visit you. I said, to visit me? My mom said, yes. And I realized that when I left for seminary, when I left for seminary, I left as a celibate. I didn't know anything about women or how women look like or what they think or anything, nothing. And I remember my mom calling me and saying that that girl could not pass her exams. That girl is just beautiful for nothing. She couldn't pass her exams. And that she's been coming to look for me. And she told her that my father had died and that I've left for college. And that she was crying. I said, Mom, why was she crying? He said she was a secret lover for years when you were in high school. And because daddy never allowed people to come over, so she, she never did. And I said to mommy, I said, mommy, so why is she not going to college? Mommy said that because she couldn't pass her high school diploma and all of that. I said, okay, mommy, I'm going to pray. One Saturday, when I did fasting and prayer, when I was in seminary, I just... I brought her name up before God and I interceded for her. I said, God, I want you to do something about her right now. My mom has told me that the, the chief of police son has made that girl pregnant. And that girl, they brought everything to pay the bride price for her to be married to the chief of police son. She said, no, that she's going to be married to me. She refused to marry a very wealthy man's son. The guy already owns a car at that age. The girl refused. She said she will accept the guy to be to come and see his, uh, his, 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 his son, but not no marriage, no more sex, nothing. That she's going to wait for me until I finish seminary. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, no way. And what happened was that one Saturday, I knelt down and I interceded on her behalf until my spirit began to groan. I was not talking to God about marriage. I never prayed for such things. I was just praying for God to interfere with her education so that she can have a future as a woman. Because what future do you have when you don't have a job or you do not have what it takes to be a lady? A technical training, a job, if you want to be a housewife, you're going to at least have, have certain potentials that are more than making babies and so on. Or cleaning, cleaning, uh, 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 cooking. So I said to God, I think that girl is too beautiful to just be a, a somebody's housewife only. I want her. I asked God primarily. I said, I want that girl. Because she talked to me once and said she would like to be a microbiologist. I asked her, what would you like to be? She told me one time that she would like. I said, God, make this girl to be a microbiologist. I mean, one month after I prayed for that girl, she passed her exam and she went to university. That girl is a microbiologist working with an oil company. My sister called me, yeah, my sister called me last year. And said to me, 
Regina came to our home in that city. She came to see our senior, my senior, uh, 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 our senior daughter, my junior sibling, Victoria. My junior, my junior, my, my, my sibling, the one that follows me among the girls, the, my the immediate child that follows me. She has five kids, I think five kids or so. And this girl came and said, where is it again? After all that many years, I'm already here in the United States. And my sister said, I live in the United States. She shouted, said she began to cry. And she wrote a check and gave to my sister and said that, that I helped her a lot. When I was a when I was a, a young a young a young person that I helped by a lot that she learned what Christianity meant through me that I was always prayerful and so on and so forth that without my prayers she would not know where she would be today. That girl is a microbiologist exactly as I said, and I prayed for the kind of husband I want her to have. She has exactly that husband. I asked girl Vincent what kind of wife she won for her uh, her son she told me exactly she got it prayer is not a joke it's a very serious thing and let me share something with you it talks about the rings on the on the altar of uh, of of incense it talks about the ring um okay Thou shalt make of it. And they shall be, they shall be uh, for places for the staffs, okay, uh, to be it with. Let me share something with you. Your life should have an opening, some opening, open, a little opening, not a big opening. See, there are four corners where there are rings, where they put the staff to carry it. Now, I'm going to talk about the opening and the staff right now. And the staff too, let me see what it says. It says the staffs, and thou shalt make, make the, uh, the staffs, that is four staffs, um, of shittim or acacia wood, okay, and overlay them with gold. Okay, the staff, the poles that are to enter into the rings or the holes, the four holes for carrying these things stands for something. Let me share with you what it stands for. In your prayer, the Bible speaks very strongly in the New Testament of having relationship with people of similar faith. Not just anybody who tells you they are Christian, you run to them. Anybody who tells you they are prophet, prophetess, you run to them. Anybody who tells you they are evangelist, you run to them. No, my sister, no, my brother. This place is telling us that there must be people of the same frame of mind, the same heart, the same frame of mind, the same spirit. You need, you need Certain people in your life that are of the same faith to the core like you, who think like you, who prays like you, you need them for them to support your journey. Stop going through life alone. I'm going to talk to you about the four, the four sides, the four corners. And the staff, the golden, the four corners have gold in it. Overlay. They are completely covered with gold. And the pole for carrying for carrying this golden uh, altar of incense is also covered completely with gold. The people that you must associate with must be golden. They should not be poor. If you are a poor person, begin to pray that God connect you with rich people. That's why you hear what I say to you. I don't like two poor people to get married. I've said it before. If you are poor, don't look for a poor person to get married to. Because both of you are going to be unfaithful and both of you are going to kill yourselves. 
Don't do it. If you are poor, don't marry a poor person. Please. Because somebody needs food. There must be gas in the car. Food on the table. A roof over your head. Two homeless people should are going to destroy each other. Your job is to get out of poverty into the reality of riches. And your job is to go from riches, is to go from prosperity to wealth and from wealth to riches. If I find you a poor person, I'm going to move you into the middle class. If I find you a middle class, I'm going to move you into the rich class. If I find you a rich class, I'm going to move you into the richer class. That's how God does his business. So where do you, where do some of the people get this idea that two people on, uh, on, uh, on, on poverty should get married? They cannot even feed themselves. Okay, the man sometimes, sometimes is even more crazy. The man has no job. The girl has no job. And they want to get married. Are you serious? How are they going to eat? How are they going to feed? Are they going to just be eating each other? <laughs> or maybe the woman is on disability. She's on retirement. And the guy is on nothing. Or the guy is on retirement or something. Or receiving some little $200. Is that what both of you are going to live on? Are you kidding me? Love is not a relationship between two idiots. Love is not a relationship between two fools. Foolish people have no business to being in love. <laughs> two foolish people have no business to fall in love. Love is not something you fall. Love is something that you walk into or you crawl slowly into. <laughs> I don't know where we get this idea that love is something that people fall into. You fall into it, you break, it will break you to pieces if you are not careful. You hear, you hear the Humpty Dog. There you go. That's why if you enter into love, you are not using your head. You are only using your emotion. You are finished. No, that's not true. Either. That is. Okay, this is this is the balance to it. Everything has a balance. Everything has a balance. No, 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 no. We are not saying. What is love in the first place for you? Is love emotion? Okay, let me tell you something. Love, listen to me carefully. Listen to me, girl. Love is 70% duty and responsibility and 30% emotion and mind. Are you listening to me? Okay, I am simply telling you the way it is. The reason is this. Let me share this with you. I'm going to use you as an example. The most important thing for you in, in, in love or in marriage is protection and comfort. I'm talking about you, girl. I know you. So all that, forget about all that. What I'm talking to you are the two most important things in a relationship that is important to you is someone to protect you and someone to provide for you. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Now, everything you are talking about should be in that power. Emotion is part of it. We are not ruling emotion out. But we, what we are saying is that Relationship begins with responsibility and duty. And then other things follows. So that is why when somebody tells me, I don't care about money. All I want is just love. 
That's what I'm talking about, girl. Good. All I want is love. All you want is love. Are you serious? You've never suffered from hunger. That's the reason why you are saying that. If you have ever been with a big swollen tummy and there's no food in it and it is rumbling inside you, brr, brr, you know what we are talking about. And the man is asking you to come and have sex with him. Let me see whether you'll be able to go and have that sex. <laughs> You're going to have sex with an empty belly. You're serious? You need to go to the store to go and buy food. And there is, and he tells you that there is no money to put gas in the car. Are you going to carry the car on your head? Are you going to put your pee inside the car to drive the car? You need money. Responsibility comes first. As far as I'm concerned, love is responsibility and duty, no matter how you look at it. And emotion, the emotion and the mentality and all that. It's part of the responsibility and duty. Okay. That's what I'm saying. But any man or any woman will tell you, just don't worry, God will take care of us. Everything will be all right. I walk away as quickly as possible. Walk away very quickly. When a man tells you, it doesn't matter. I'll get a job uh, soon and so on. If the person is not already having a job. I'll get education. I've already applied. If the person is not already on, in school. Or I've already finished. There are billions of people who have already gotten their degrees. Billions of people looking for the right person to marry. And you are going to those who are making you promises. Are you serious? Let me get back to what I'm telling you. This portion is telling us that you need someone of the same faith. Somebody who is responsible. Who can hold your hand. Whose hand you can hold. Who can protect your emotion, your mind, your spirit, your body? That's what you need. That's what the four corners means. Number one, you need family members. The four corners and the four staffs are these people. You need family. Your family is going to play a part in your life. Let me tell you, if something is wrong with the way your family is organized, is going to affect your prayer life. Even if you do not want to have anything to do with your family members, make sure that there is peace between you and everybody. I remember what the, what the son of uh, Prophet Espoom says. Say, Mommy, forgive them and let them go. Forgive them and forget about them. I like that. There are family members that you should forgive them for what they've done and then forget about them and move forward. Then God knows that you have, you've cleared your conscience. But then there are family members that you will need. At least one person will be somebody that can confide in you. You can confide in. You need family to succeed as a Christian. You need another thing. You need one person in your bloodline that you can work with in order to get the other blood, bloodline moving. It's not just going to be you alone who is saved. Other people in your bloodline are going to get saved. You're going to be praying for them. That altar, that movable altar of incense means that you're going to be praying for the rest of the people around the corner of your family. Another is territory where you live. That altar represents territory. You need to take charge of the four corners, the north, south, east, and west wind. You need to take charge of it. Maya. Yes. Maya, make sure that you call me when, when we are done. Okay? Okay. I need to know what is going on with your husband and you and, uh, and, uh, and my daughter. I need to know. I need to know what is going on. You don't know what's going on with your job. I'm back. Maybe you didn't know that I was out of town. And already I prayed for you during this day in this video. I prayed for you. I lifted up your offering to God today.
I want you to take charge of the north, south, east, and west wind. And whatever passes through the wind, the four corners stand for these things, north, south, east, and west. There are supernatural powers of darkness in the north, south, east, and west wind. You are to take charge of it. You are a child of the Holy Ghost, which means that you are sons and daughters of the wind. Prayers give you wings to fly. Geneva, please write that down. Pamela, write that down for me. Prayers give you wings to fly in the north, in the south, in the east, and in the west wind. That's the meaning of it. And you need people who have spirit in their wings. You need spirit to give speed to your